Australia's insane plan to green the outback. The outback. It's one of Australia's most iconic landscapes, but it's also one of the world's harshest environments. Australia is the world's driest inhabited continent, located in the Southern Hemisphere's subtropical belt. The outback is nearly twice the size of India, spanning over 5.7 million square kilometers. The outback is currently uninhabitable because temperatures frequently exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius, and the region receives less than 8 inches of rain per year. This makes the area extremely hostile to life. Australia has long desired to increase arable land by repopulating the outback and transforming the continent into a completely different climate. In this video, we will show you an amazing plan made in 1938 to green the outback, which is currently back on political agenda in Australia. And we will show you how the plan could make the outback livable for humans and native animals such as the kangaroo, emu, koala, and crocodile. Welcome back to Circle of the Earth, where we explore everything about reforestation, decertification, and greening projects. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. As the world's driest inhabited continent, many Australians have long wished to bring water to the arid inland opening up millions of hectares for agriculture, population, and economic growth. Back in 1938, John Bradfield came up with a plan to accomplish this and bring water inland. His plan is called the Bradfield Scheme. Dr. John Bradfield was born in 1867 and lived until 1943. As an engineer, he was involved in numerous projects such as the design of the Sydney Harbour Bridge, assisted in the design and planning of the University of Queensland, engineered the construction of Sydney's electric railway system, and served as Deputy Chancellor of the University of Sydney from 1942 until he died. But Dr. Bradfield is perhaps better known for something he did not build, the Bradfield Scheme. This is a magnificent plan for inland Australia's watering, which he presented to the Queensland government in 1938 after a lifelong interest in irrigation and water conservation. The scheme that Bradfield proposed in 1938 required large pipes, tunnels, pumps, and dams. But where would the water come from? The Bradfield scheme involved diverting the waters of the upper reaches from the Johnson, Tully, Herbert, Burdekin, and Flinders rivers, one into the other and then into the Thompson, going all the way down to Lake Eyre. As the lake is being refilled, the water will evaporate, causing climate change and rainfall throughout inland Australia. The Lake Eyre Basin covers roughly one-fifth of Australia's landmass, 1.17 million square kilometers with an annual rainfall of no more than 233 millimeters or less than 10 inches. The tropical northeastern section of Queensland, on the other hand, is a land of many rivers, draining an area of 970,000 square kilometers with an average rainfall of 790 millimeters. It has some of Australia's highest rainfall areas. Dr. Bradfield spent some of his later years riding through Queensland's super wet belt, surveying his dream because it was such an obvious waste of Australia's most valuable asset, water. Dr. Bradfield fought his way through the dense rainforests of the mountains behind Innisfail and Ingham on horseback, armed only with the most basic surveying equipment, to come up with a design for his grand plan. His skill was such that later engineers and surveyors could find few flaws in the overall concept of his plan and the locations he chose for his dams. But as is often the case with visionary men, Dr. Bradfield's dream of transforming Central Australia into his Girawin, a place of flowers, was not without its detractors. Following his first concrete proposal of the scheme in a report to the Queensland government in 1938, and with great excitement and a large loyal base of support, it wasn't long before the criticisms began. The scheme had been criticized due to the high capital and ongoing operating costs, which would render the project unprofitable. Also, critics say the plan is too ambitious and that the resulting reservoir lake air could lead to devastating floods. Elevation measurements were taken with a barometer which resulted in inaccurate land heights and errors in the proposal. In most cases, Bradfield had no access to river flow records. Reduced river discharge to the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon 
may have a negative impact on coastal fisheries by reducing the supply of terrestrial organic matter to the coastal and estuarine environment. In 1947, another engineer, Dr. Nimmo, conducted a critical review of the scheme. He demonstrated that Bradfield's estimates of the amount of water available from easterly flowing rivers was roughly 2.5 times higher than reality. According to Nimmo, Bradfield calculated evaporation rates using a formula applied to German rivers. By applying this formula to the hot Australian interior, he severely underestimated the amount of water that would evaporate in transit, causing more water to be lost through seepage and the inland reservoirs created to be insufficient to induce rainfall. When these factors were considered, the enormous costs outweighed the actual benefits of the plan. Supporters claimed the proposal could be changed, but as public support dwindled, the Bradfield project was put on hold indefinitely. Plans that appeal to popular sentiment, however, do not vanish overnight, and a vocal minority has pushed the governments to reconsider over the years. The original scheme was then revised by different engineers. This revised report proposed diverting water from the upper reaches of four coastal streams to the Midwest and Central Western Plains for crop irrigation, cattle fattening, timber farms, and drought mitigation for sheep. As a result, Queensland Premier Sir John Bielk Peterson announced that the Queensland government would proceed with the revised scheme and secured a $5 million commitment from the then federal government. In 2007, 80 years after Bradfield designed the Bradfield scheme, the Australian government released a report stating that the plan was viable and that it could be implemented. The report stated that the plan would cost around $40 billion, but that the benefits would be worth it. It's a lot of money, but the potential rewards are enormous. The plan has the potential to transform Australia into a green paradise, allowing for increased food production as well as an increase in tourism, both of which have numerous economic benefits. According to the report, the plan would have to be implemented over a period of 50 to 100 years and would have to be a collaborative effort between the Australian government and the private sector. In 2020, the Australian government published a revised plan titled the Bradfield Scheme 2.0. The new plan was very similar to the original, but with a few key changes. The most notable change was that the plan would no longer divert rivers into Lake Eyre, but instead focused on building dams and reservoirs throughout the outback. This change was made to address criticism that the original plan would lead to devastating floods. Taken together, the Bradfield project has captivated many Australians, but its realization has remained elusive. Regardless, the outback is a harsh environment, and the plan has the potential to make the region livable, if not prosperous. The government clearly needs to conduct more research, and only time will tell if the plan is really implemented. Don't you also think this project is such an inspiration? Let us know in the comments what you think about the amazing Bradfield scheme. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified on every new video from our channel. Thanks for watching.